Welcome to Monday Night's Talk Talk Show, and as it is with great sadness that we've learned this week of the passing of two very young Birmingham City fans, 16-year-old Lewis and 22-year-old Chloe Kerr. As always, the Talk and Talk Show offers condolences to the families and friends of both of these supporters taken far too early. Rest in peace, you little blue angels. Never easy to do then. No, sad. Always puts a lump in my throat. No. <laughs> Uh, right, okay, it's going to be a big show tonight, and we've got uh, two gentlemen here from West Midlands Police. This is, uh, introduce you to Colin. Good evening. Uh, very good evening to you, sir. And Stuart, also known as Blade. Good evening. Uh, the Blade meaning? Well, that's my second name, Bladen. Bladen, so okay, that's all right, okay. That's all right, that's fine, that's fine. <laughs> Mr. Fon, good evening. I'm also known as a few other things on the You show. are known I'm as quite a few yeah. other things, yeah. Not yeah. repeatable, yeah, exactly. though. Yeah. But I'm sure everybody will remind you yeah, once again yeah. tonight. <laughs> Come on. Have you had a good week? Not too bad. Marvellous, wonderful. And very big welcome to Mrs. Brown. (laughs) (laughs) Congratulations. Where do we get it from? Uh, Right, gentlemen, welcome to the Tilt and Talk Show. Congratulations in order. Congratulations. Ah, yes, absolutely. Uh, Yeah, earphones. Many congratulations for being cancer free today. Thank you very much. Absolutely. Thank you very much. I'm going to see that post yeah. uh, a little bit earlier on Facebook. Uh, yeah. I've got goosebumps. Yeah. And Birmingham City ever gives me goosebumps. 18 months now. So 18 months. Yeah. Nice well one. Yeah. And I'm very sore. So if my voice is a bit high pitched, it's because of the. <laughs> of the old... All right, we do know. We do know. We do know. Yeah. <laughs> family show. Come on. <laughs> well, it was a family show till this evening. <laughs> uh, right, first off, gentlemen, you work for West Midlands Police Football Division. Uh, then I wish to report a theft. I wish to report a theft and I wish you to do something about this. This is absolutely, and every single person that's on this Facebook page tonight will agree with me. We have got another football club called Ipswich Town who is trying to steal, keep right on to the end of the road and make it their own song. That, if it isn't theft, I don't know what is. Right? They've sang it a few times in the past uh, and now they're trying to adopt it as their anthem. Go away, Ipswich, go away. Can you do something about it for us? We're going to look into it. Are they looking to permanently deprive you of the song? Well, the thing is, that song's yeah, been attached to Birmingham City. Yeah, is that theft? Well, yeah, yeah. No, but it's as far as I'm concerned, it's, it is. still ours. We, 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 yeah, but we could still have access to the song. No, but I want... I want. Let them have it in League One next season. It doesn't matter. <laughs> Beautiful. A massively irrelevant club over in the East. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. That's, I'm off already. Yeah. It was Scotland last week. It's Ipswich this week. <laughs> What's uh, the point of Ipswich? Absolutely. Uh, as always, then, at the start of the Talk and Talk show, we'll go straight into the ladies' game over the weekend. Okay. Off yeah. you go. Um, drew nil-nil at home to current champions Chelsea. Um, a, a game in which which we struggled to get going <clears> in an attacking sense, um, but defensively, again, showed why... We've got probably the best back five in the league. Um, certainly the best centre half partnership in the league, and absolutely the best goalkeeper in the league. Um, and Catherine, who's who's been on this show, obviously mentioned about Chris being cancer free. Anne's yep. gone through her cancer yep, yep, thing yep, as yep. well. But um, <clears throat> you know, as as a as a goalkeeper in in that division, she's. She's just proving Next. week in week out a, an absolute standard. Not just the, not just the save from the penalty from Karen Carney, but you know just generally her whole, her whole game um, control, commanding the area, comfortable. You know, make it must make it very very easy for that back five, knowing that she's behind them. But the the back five Ooh, penalty stopper as well. Fantastic. <laughs> well, I tell you what, what a stop as well because you no know, one meant against you. Oh well, <laughs> she didn't have to save mine. Mine crashed back off the bar, but yeah. Um, so yeah, another point on the board. So that's played six now. Won four, drew one, lost one. So we're third in the table as it stands, which isn't bad. Come on, it's Empire. very, very good. Um, I know you were a bit, you, know, you were a bit kind of. Mm, no, I was, I was all right about the start of this season. Um, <clears throat> you know, but I think even that may even have exceeded my expectations for the for the start of the season they've had. You know, five mm. clean sheets out of six now. Yeah. Um, you know, and like I say, if they can get that. They can get that fluidity <coughs> in an attacking sense, especially against the bigger teams. You know, we've played Man City and Chelsea our last two home games, and and going forward, we haven't quite clicked as as well as we do against teams that bank up uh, and try and sit sit back against us and defend. So if we can get that going, um, then 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 there's no reason why we can't. 
right. can't keep you know make sure that we keep up at the top of that table. Um, big test in two weeks away at Arsenal. who have won five from five and scored twenty seven. I think it is. Uh, mm-hmm. They're absolutely flying. Um, so it'll be a big test then. If we could get something from that, then then we're, we're very much still in it. Great, great news. Okay, yeah. Uh, so it wasn't all doom and gloom then, at least. No, no. Look, listen, from an attacking sense, we we could have been better. We probably should have been better. But defensively, we're as as resolute and as as top quality as we have been all excellent, season. Excellent. Uh, Benji Smith, gents, would also like to report Harry Redknapp for trying to offload Michael Keith and Bell to Derby. Mm-hmm. Um, that's a crime. I'm sure, that's there's a, a few. Yes. Uh, Few things Harry Redknapp could be uh, now, reported um, for allegedly. Now, now, allegedly. Steady. <laughs> Steady. That's a word that's going to be Steady. used so often tonight, Steady. isn't Steady. it? <laughs> well, gents, it's great to have West Midlands Police in with us. This is something that we've actually spoken about many, 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 many times, isn't it, Chris? About yeah, yeah. Um, about ago. doing a, a football-related police show. Um, can you tell us then? Like, let's let's go to uh, the Derby game, the Derby game, the, the Derby game at St Andrews. Um, when do you start preparing for that one? Let's assume it's in November. Well, well it, is, it is in November. It, no, it is. The, game, the home game you're talking game about. Is, is the home game's like March. March, is it March? Yeah, March yeah. Yeah. The home game's in March. For the game next month, we started planning as soon as the fixtures came out for it. So the day, the, day the fixtures come near out? Near enough. Yeah, yeah. Give or take. Fixtures came out middle of June, probably beginning of July we met for the first time. Right. And for the game at Blues <clears> in March, we met for the first time last week. Okay. So what are we, four, four and a half months away, something like yeah. that. And who's so, involved in this meeting? Um, initially, we... A silver commander is appointed. A silver commander runs the operation, if that makes sense, right. who is normally a chief superintendent or superintendent level. Mm-hmm. Um, and they're sort of in overall charge of the policing operation for that day. Yeah. And then it's the other, they, then it works its way down to a bronze commander. Bronze commanders look at the deployments on the day, various different areas we're policing, Birmingham City Centre, for example. Um, area of Aston, area of the Blues ground, depending on where the game is and yeah. things like that. And then obviously myself and Blade who, who deal with sort of the day-to-day work of the sort of policing of football and the fans, really. Yeah. So are you, are you sat in the police box yourselves on, on match day then? No, not, not at all. Uh, we're out and about with the fans and uh, just giving information to the bronze commanders, letting them make informed decisions on the day, really. Um, what... What we probably missed off there is that the clubs get together as well at the start yeah. of each season, and they get at, they have a meeting together where they decide allocations and everything else. So that, the finer points of it. Quickly interrupt that. Uh, sorry, Jerry Gills joined in tonight, and he said, uh, "Remind the Tractor Boys of the Worthington Cup semi-final. Keep right on. You've never heard like it, uh, anything like it. My best night Absolutely. in a blue shirt. Keep up the good work, lads." And Gary Monk. Thanks ever so much, Jerry. Mm, and good. Jerry, I'd just Jerry's like doing to remind good work at Bath as well. Absolutely, yeah. I'd like to remind mind Jerry that you still command the highest audience on the Turn Talk Show ever. Yeah, he does. Ninety-seven thousand six hundred. Mm. Nice one, well done. Uh, so sorry, gents. Yeah, go you on. were going back uh, the. You mentioned the clubs will meet at the start of the season. Yeah, is that for both fixtures? That's in for terms both of both fixtures. fixtures? Yeah. And you mentioned the the word that I'm sure you know. I've looked at your Twitter <laughs> accounts. <laughs> the most commonly used word on Twitter since you announced that we you were coming on, and that's allocations. Yeah, allocations for derby games, home and away. Would that be decided at the start of the season, point blank? Yeah, it's a reciprocal agreement between both clubs. They will get together at the start of the season and decide what the away allocation will be and they will give it both the same. Then. Does West Midlands Police have any influence on that whatsoever? That's one question that a lot of people have been asking. Yeah, yeah. No, we don't have any influence. The clubs decide that allocation okay, and then we get to police what they tell us. We don't have any influence on... Birmingham City or Aston Villa about how many tickets they sell for any game. So after, so, so, I think Blues have come out before. You know, I'm, excuse me if I'm wrong. I'm sure I've seen statements from Blues, statements from Villa, where they've said, upon you know interaction with West Midlands Police, we have de- we the decision has come to you know to be that w- this is the allocation for that game that. That would be not not a lie, but not 100% no, true. I mean, like we liaise with them up to the 
game up, up to the day and what we do is provide them with intelligence and reports regarding what they can expect on that day yeah if something comes in new they need to know about it and that make lets them make an informed decision as well okay. about the allocations do not make that decision on allocations no. no there you go that was a double no you've heard yeah. it straight from the horse's mouth uh, so when it comes you know out i've always thought that you did yeah, I know. And, yeah, and I'm yeah. sure that everybody else no. on here listening always thought that you did. Yeah. Uh, another question that's very relevant, uh, Craig Cox and Roy Atwood, and they're very much intertwined. Uh, when are the police in Aston Villa going to be able to play our clubs uh, on derby days at Saturday at three o'clock when the Met managed to control all their derbies in London? And Roy says, why BCFs Villa on a Sunday, 12 noon, and not West Bromwich, Albion Villa? Explain, please. I'll start with the West Brom Villa one initially. Yeah. Blade might give you a bit more, it's the Villa. <coughs> police, for those who've been to the Hawthorns, Policing West Brom is relatively easy. easy. Yeah. For those who, when you know, when you come out of West Brom, yeah, yeah. you come out on the Middlemore Road, yeah. and let's be honest, you won't see a home fan for some considerable time. And that's just the layout of the ground. That's, that's just the way it is. Um, <coughs> you know, you look at a lot of these newer grounds, and they're no more than a everybody bowl. Comes in yeah, so, so everybody yeah. comes out together. Stoke, Blues, West those sort Arm, of grounds. Yeah. Yep, they all come out together. Whereas West Brom, They've kept it the way it was from years and years ago with Middlemore Road. So hence a Friday night um, policing West Brom against Villa won't won't cause us too many issues. Yeah. Had it been the other way around and had it been uh, EFL and, or Sky trying to get it on a Friday night at Villa Park... Are we talking about the Blues going now? No, oh, the, we're Albion. talking about Albion because yeah, I know sorry, yeah. people are referring to that and saying, why has that been allowed? Yes. If it was Villa Park versus West Bromwich Albion on a Friday night, yeah. we we would mm. staunchly object to that. Yeah. We would go, although we have no grounds whatsoever to stop that match going ahead because yeah. we have no powers to do that. Yeah. We would then we would call what is an extraordinary safety advisory group meeting. Now, a safety advisory group is a body of people who inform the council who issue the safety certificate for all the grounds. Right. So, in this particular <laughs> instance, Birmingham, Birmingham City Council, yeah. they hold the safety certificate and issue it to the grounds. So, us as police, we have no powers on that SAG. We just pass information to the safety advisory group yeah, and recommendations, yeah. and then they make the decisions. Okay. Okay, so uh, I've just seen one that says if we could play the, um, uh, the, the the Villa game on that Tuesday night, the infamous one, obviously the one with the flares, etc. Um, why can't uh, why not the league game? That was that was a League Cup game. Yeah. League Cup. Now you can't move League Cup games at the beginning of a season. Obviously, the um, football league put in certain dates if that makes sense. Yeah. And. Carling Cup as it was then, League Cup, Carabera Cup as it is now. Carling Cup, it'll always be the Carling Cup. It'll always be the Carling Cup. <laughs> On midweek fixtures, there is no way the Football <clears throat> League or the Premier League, depending sort of which level you're at, would allow a Premier League or Football League game to be moved to yeah. allow a Cup, cup game, match, yeah. a League Cup game. The FA Cup's completely different, obviously. Yeah. The League Cup game to be played on a Saturday yeah. instead of a League fixture. So there you go, Luke Acton, you've got your answer to that one. Okay. So, uh, allocations again. So the clubs announce yeah. allocations like probably a month and yeah. a, a half in advance um, of the game to the fans. Yes, probably, to yeah. the fans. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, but yeah. that that's that's the point that maybe maybe there should be a better communication between fans that allocations are announced it's, it's, for games like this. Allocations are announced at the start of the season. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So one, as soon as they've made that decision, the allocation is made to the supporters so that the supporters know. How many are they yeah. going to get from day one? Mm -hmm. And they, you know, I because didn't, I didn't think it was a secret. I mean, <laughs> if anybody asked me what their allocation would be, yeah, I'm quite happily to tell them. It yeah, was two thousand one hundred. Yeah. Right? Yeah. we were never told it's a secret. No, no. So, so if we reveal no. that information, so you're a, you're a Birmingham City fan yourself, Colin. Yes, right, and. Uh, oh. Thanks, I'm all. Yes, I'm all. Uh, and Blade is not. Water. Blade is not. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and you've been a season to get older yourself. Yeah. How old are you? Forty-four. Forty-four. I'm fifty-seven. I can remember Birmingham City versus B6 when I was a child. Nearly sixty thousand there, and you had coppers with the little pointed helmets on, and next to. I wouldn't say next to no trouble. But exactly. But exactly. I, I don't believe you. I don't. I'm not. I'm not yeah, calling that, you a liar on the show. But I don't believe the that there was no trouble. Would be completely full of them. 
completely full of them. All their little balloons, pink but it's, and blue. It's different. It's, it's different. It, it is different. It's different worlds. Isn't there anecdotal stories about that Hitler couldn't stop the production line at Longbridge, but a Blues Villa game could? <laughs> <laughs> no, <really. Yeah>, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely right. So. Absolutely right. Do you know what? That needs immortalising. Yeah. Somewhere, doesn't it? <laughs> it does. Yeah. I think we need so a. We need a. We need a, a, we need a, a picture. Canvas, I might yeah. clip that. Yeah. We, we need. We need that right up, arting up. I, I need that. We need that on the wall. Thank you for that. Yeah. Nice I'll one. carry on about the allocation, yeah. if you want. Yeah, yeah. Because <coughs> another question which has come out today, or, or there or thereabouts, in relation to what is the normal away allocation. Yeah. So say, I don't know, Sheffield Wednesday on Saturday coming to Blues, or Swansea going to Villa Pete last Taylor's week. you the red card, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Grab your coat. Okay. Um, <laughs> uh, sort of what is the usual away allocation? And um, as I say, for a team coming to St Andrews, the usual maximum away allocation is 2,800. That can be moved slightly, and that's clearly a club decision. Again, that's not down. Up and down. Up and yeah. down. Um, if you remember when West Brom came in the FA Cup, what was it, three years ago? Next, they got 5,000. Yeah. Middlesbrough came on a Friday night and again promotion a couple yeah. of years yeah, ago. Yeah, four, so yeah. 4,800 yeah. tickets. Mm -hmm. So as I say, there is that flexibility there, but it's a club decision. And I'm sure Blade will say something about when teams go to Villa Park. Um, it's, and it also comes down to then what the club decide they want to do regarding how many seats. They call it seat kills, which is basically a bit of netting over a seat. Yes. Yeah, 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 That's yeah. what they call it. Yeah. Yeah. And whether that be a block, whether that be a couple of rows at the front, again, that is a club decision which is in line with what they're trying to get their point across to safety advisory group. Or worst case scenario, if it ever ended up in court, um, coroner's court or something. Yeah, like it's defence is probably the wrong word for it, but sort of yeah. their mitigation, if you yes. know what I mean. Yeah, yeah. Hang on, yeah. we've tried as much as we can. You can't. We've, you we've can't kept stop say yeah. five hundred <laughs> seats here spare. You know we can't do any mm. more. But again, I stress this is a club decision in relation to allocations, and again, it's no secret. Blues have offered Villa more tickets previously if you know what I mean in previous seasons for this fixture yeah but it's only ever going to be on a reciprocal basis because you imagine if one club offers three and a, a half, thousand yeah. more that's not fair is it no so that's why the clubs do it but <clears throat> Blade will explain regarding the Villa sort of reciprocal allocation and why they do it as well and it's I mean everybody minds about the 2100 allocation but last season Villa gave a 2100 allocation to Millwall it gave a 2100 allocation to Bristol City um, and these are any high risk. What was games. the highest allocation? Um, gave last the season? most we can most we can give you since going into the championship is two thousand seven hundred and fifty, right? Or two thousand seven hundred and fifty-five. Okay. I believe that's because it. Yeah, that's a it's lower and upper like. upper. Um, Doug Ellis. Do, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So it's mm. not outrageous. We're not talking thousands less than <laughs> no, we're talking six hundred playoff semi final would yeah. get. So Craig Coach yeah. is now asking then, okay, you don't move or you, they can't move and they won't move a, a league cup game. What, how, why will they move a league game? That comes down to a decision between the two clubs and the F EFL and the biggest decider in a lot of things is Sky, Sky TV. Right. Um, hence. Blues Albion on a Friday night. Yeah. Some people immediately that was Villa announced. Albion on the Friday yeah, night. Yeah. As soon as that Blues Albion was announced, straight up people were saying, "Why have you allowed that game to yeah. happen on a Friday night?" And that's because Sky came in for it. And they say we kept the same policing resources for that game on a Friday night as you would have done for a three o'clock Blues Albion, if you know what I mean. So say. there was no, there was no, um, no question from yourselves that y you were gonna, you were gonna fight for that. Blues not Albion to be on a Friday night. No, we were, we were quite happy. Yeah. Say, it's not mine and Blade's decision. No, it's not the right. the e what happens? The EFL, um, well, Sky Start, yeah. goes through to the EFL, goes through to the clubs. The clubs then send it through to the police. Yeah, and, and sort okay. of that that's how it all works. Yeah, and I'm rest assured, I say I've been in a football unit nearly ten years along with Blade, and. You can count the games on one hand Westminster's place have ever objected to. Yeah. And even if they do object, there is no guarantee that you'll get your way. No, no, that no. we'll get That's our way. Right. And as I say, people are surprised Blues Albion and people are clearly surprised about Albion Villa going ahead on the Friday yeah. night as well. Yeah. But um as I say, no objections at all yeah. to it. Mm. Okay, uh, I've got to say well done to Lorraine O'Brien and a big hello. Welcome to you. Uh, you are our special guest on the Tilton Talk Trillion Trovis T V this week <laughs> um, for your comments do you remember what the comment was Mrs Brown no 
I can't know. No, it was a good no, one. It was a good one. Yeah. Right, we've got three competition winners this week, and all you've got to do to enter this week's competition is share this on your own personal Facebook page. Do not share it to any other groups, as Facebook pick it up as spam and ban it. Mm. Okay, just share it on your personal Facebook group um, so that um, we get the word out about Birmingham City. And we've got two uh, three word reviews as well. Which <coughs> I'll give you the two three words. word reviews. Yeah, two yeah. three word reviews. All right, okay, Picked Ben Pickering. Looks, so okay, Go spoil it's your birthday. We're going to party like it's your birthday. I don't know. I don't know what that's all about. My birthday's Christmas Day, so um, unless yeah, you're coming up no, no. on Christmas Day to buy me a beer, then. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> which I'll always accept, of course, by the way. And at your age, you want um, to start forgetting about them, don't you? What's that, sorry? At your age, you want to start forgetting yeah. about them, really. Yeah. Yeah, so. yeah. Am I older than you or younger? Oh, you're much younger. You just look a lot older. <laughs> <laughs> a question um, on the on the derby again, um, Roy Atwood. Why did the police only allow twenty five thousand at Blues, but allow Villa to sell out? This is it. Goes back to the same one before, as in club decision. Yeah. The club decide, and it's the safety team who decide what seats again they want to say. Yes. Yeah. Seat kills never sounds right, but but you know what I mean. As in not sell those yeah. seats. Um, and that could be they, the front two rows, maybe, that they think will prevent people going onto the pitch more. Yeah. Keeping more of a segregation between home and away fans, again, to prevent disorder. Yeah. Up but at Gilmerick, no uh, away, arm fans yes. over away yeah. fans. Yeah, yeah. To, to, because for those who have been Wolves Blues over the years, will know what happens from the top tier yeah, to the that bottom Friday tier. Friday night, especially that. Yeah, exactly. The, 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 the especially that. Yeah. Spitting at me and all sorts. Exactly. Yeah. So what yeah. Blues have said, we don't sell above that. That reduces yeah. the chance of that happening beneath. Yeah. And whether fans agree or not, you can see where the club are coming from with that. If you know yeah, what I mean. Yeah. So for anybody who's had spit pies and hot tea thrown at them at Wolves, yeah. Know exactly the hot reason why stuff. it's done. Yeah. Yes. Um, Roy's comment there, twenty-five thousand. So he's He's got that 25,000 figure. <clears throat> I think the capacity of blows, if, if every seat was taken, is just over 30,012, 30, is it, or something? So it's ridiculous. Just over Some, yeah, yeah, somewhere between so you've about got, 29. You've got the seat 30. kills, the, the banner between the away and the rest of the Gilmerick. The upper Gilmerick is always closed anyway, bar exceptional circumstances Fulham, yeah. like Fulham last season. Um, take, take them out. What is. The, if every other seat was filled, do you know what the attendance would be? I wouldn't have thought you'd be far off that 25,000. Yeah. If you rule out the front two rows at a cop, the lower Gilmerick, and with Tilton, the Tilton yeah. and three quarters of the upper Gilmerick, You're lucky that's at... probably not far off four and a half, five thousand mm. seats, yeah. is it? Plus yeah. a sterile area. Plus a sterile area yeah. as well. Yeah. Because that divide is set roughly at four thousand, where the the yellow netting is now, yes. that is roughly four thousand. Yes. So if you think with two thousand one hundred away fans, yeah. that is nineteen hundred seats. Yeah, that's where your four and a half, five thousand seats are. It sounds a lot, you know. I, Absolutely, I'm not saying it's not. So, a lot so at all. we are literally talking Upper Gilmerick, the barrier, the seat kills between home and away, and the front two rows all along the Tilton and the Cop. I think it's sometimes three you, or four. You're looking at you're looking at four, four and a half thousand seats, aren't you? Yeah. I'd have thought so. There, you... there is, you know, as frustrating as it is to say to say, oh, Villa can sell out and we can only have a twenty-five and a half thousand. But Villa do the same as well, don't they? Yeah, I mean Villa don't. I mean we don't sell. I think it's forty-two thousand seven hundred is maximum, yeah. but we don't sell that. We're probably around about the forty-one. Yeah, um, that including the opportunity. If that's, that's open. Yeah, yeah. And I mean that for the last two seasons, that's only been opened when ticket sales have dictated yes. otherwise. So. Yeah. Mm. Uh, Dennis has been a long-term listener on the Tilton Talk Show all eight years of it, and he's asked the very first sensible question in his life tonight. I don't <laughs> believe it. <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah. Do I don't you, believe it. Do you travel to away games, or do West Midlands Police leave that then to the relevant police forces? No, we travel to every single away game. Um, the, the fans. How are many at, of you? Um, basically, usually it's just ourselves and another spotter we take with us. Um, it's this is our community. Whether you're at home or away, yeah. you're our community. You'll remember his face forever now, <laughs> won't you? <laughs> and we'll follow you, and we're there to help our community. Mm. It, uh, I am a beat Bobby, and that's how I see myself. My yeah. community needs me, although it might be a transient community every that other week. Around, yeah. They're still my community, so I should go with them and be that link yeah. for them. And yeah. that's a, again, that's another reciprocal arrangement. Um, for clubs when they come to the West Midlands as well, they'll provide two sure. officers to come and work with West Midlands Police as well. Yeah. And that's done all around the country, whenever yeah. the game is, um, you'll have officers from that host force yeah. working there. I'm only 
30, 29, 30 next year. Um, I remember a time going to Villa away where we were in the the um, north stand yeah. beyond the goal. Um, my brother James has just come with the question. Um, would it not be a better idea to move the away fans to a different area, such as the main stand lower? That's obviously a Blues-related question. It's been discussed. It has been discussed yeah. in meetings out from the club. It's also been discussed at with Villa, if that makes sense, yeah. to yeah. you to go back to the lower north for the away fans. Oh, okay. I, I, I think your problem, your problem logistically there is is the outward flow. Um, whereas at the moment you've got the car park to contain people in, and you can block that off re relatively um, safely with you know, when you do the van to van. Mm. Um, that, mm. that can completely kind of block that mm. area off. But then you'll, you'll be letting away supporters out with home supporters. Literally. And is it the home fans above the away fans again? It like is. At Wolves? Yeah. The other issue is, is that if you decide to move away fans for one game, you're upsetting those home fans season who normally ticket holders, season yeah. ticket holders. And I know when Blues have done it in the past for those games, you mentioned West Brom and Middlesbrough with a large away allocation. Yeah. I know Blues have had complaints from those season ticket holders who have got to move for that one In the lower game, Gilmerick. In the lower okay. Gilmerick. And as I say, you know, that's not a police issue, but that's another reason the club are always yeah. against it. And if you look at Blues, the the away coach park was specifically built yeah. for yeah, the for away coaches. Yeah, of course, but yeah. We discuss it regularly with both clubs, don't we, about moving, you know, moving the fans. Yeah. But I don't think it would Logistically, be I don't think it would be a good idea. It'd be a lot of work for one game. Yeah, yeah. At, yeah. at Villa Park, it'd be a lot less work to have the away fans behind the goal. I've got yes. to say, and if it was my decision, that's where they would be. Yeah. Well, do you know what the easiest solution is? That's interesting. Don't allow any away fans in and sell out to all blue fans. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. Yeah. No. Why would, not? But atmosphere. would that push atmosphere. the issue outside yeah. then? Atmosphere. Exactly. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. And, and you'll get home fans, right. away yeah. fans trying to get into the into the home seats yeah. and everything like that. No, that's it's it. no good. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, um, that's interesting that you should say that. Um, you're in an ideal world, you'd like the away fans to be in the lower north, like it used to be. Yeah. It'd be so much easier to police. Yeah. If with the away fans at Villa Park were in the lower north. Yeah. Yeah, we've got a superstar listening in tonight. Um, is it Richard? It is Richard. Oh, Richard good Hayner. on you, Richard. Uh, <laughs> thank you very much. He said his mum is uh, also born on Christmas Day, like myself, and there are only special people born on that day. <laughs> but he called me Chris. <laughs> wow. It's because I'm his favourite. <laughs> <laughs> good evening, Richard. <laughs> this is the United Kingdom. <laughs> yeah. Out in Florida, I take it, in all the warm sunshine, bless it. Yeah, in Miami. Yeah. Uh, all right, the Beautiful. Sun. All right, the sun. Right, okay, we're just going to go off uh, that for a, a few minutes then and talk about the game on Saturday. Did you go? I did not. I did not get a ticket either. No, so I, I did, did not, not get, get a and ticket. And I had my little grandson with me over the weekend. Uh, we had a lovely time. Um, and he went up we to... We saw... We, 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 I went to go. I went to go see um, First Man at the cinema with him. It was all about uh, Neil Armstrong's uh, Mission to the Moon. Oh yeah, yeah. It was actually a very, very, very emotional film. And I do it's recommend. It's not about it. that, is it? Is it about? His it is all about relationship that. with his it is, wife. It was, it was his, his little daughter lost had cancer. Kid, yeah, he? yeah like, lost, and, and he actually took a bracelet up. Sorry, I'm ruining it for It's all right, and, and <laughs> yeah. threw, it, threw it into the crate, and I'm like, Whoa. Uh, I'm not, I'm, you know, I'm, yeah. <laughs> Yes, I am special, and I thanks Ken Allegedly, Smith. I did, obviously, <laughs> I did, for all I did, those I did enjoy my trip. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> James Wayne wants to know: uh, Is it pay on the gate tomorrow? I don't think so, because you Very know why. Because, because you know why? Um, because, because the cop and the it. Tilton are nearly yeah. sold. Because they don't out. sell pay on the day. Sold out. You want to listen to Amir's tweets in the daytime, my man? Um, you want to listen to Amir? Yeah. Amir, has, Amir has said on numerous occasions mm. there is no point in offering pay on the gate they've offered pay on the gate at numerous go home games over the last couple of years i think the the lowest they had four tickets <laughs> let's have a look what he's got to say it's all right go on four yeah. tickets yeah. sold they really? opened the gates on pay on the gate <laughs> and four people bought a ticket oh, right. so that, and they have to you know they have to pay staff to to man the office and print tickets off yeah and I think the the one game there was four tickets sold. That's surprising, so, isn't it? It's, really not, it's just yeah. not viable for them. Okay, so there you go. So it's probably not paying the gate tomorrow. But what you can do, you don't need your fast pass or this pass or the other pass. What you can do is do the print at home option. Print your tickets, just mosey yourself on down mm -hmm. and get in the normal way. Now, yeah. I'll be leaving home 
uh, much to my son's disgust at five o'clock tomorrow. Ready? Ready to come home. Coming home tomorrow. Oh, I'm I'm tomorrow. So that M6 is alright. It's not the M6, I don't do the M6, I do the A38 up by the Belfry. And, oh, and, okay, and yeah, yeah. Kind of all, all that way. I wouldn't do the M6, never do the M6. Yeah. And uh, no, the little man didn't get his stilt, and I feel really guilty for it, but um, he got up on some Sunday morning, I wanted to watch programmes on Jupiter, Mars, and uh, all the celestial bodies. <laughs> seven oh, years yeah. old, seven years old, he's an absolute space geek. I tell you, lovely, I love it. Uh, I call, he calls me Space Grandad. Space Grandad. <laughs> um, right, okay. <laughs> da, 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 da. Going on then to the game on Saturday. What an absolute cracker of a goal. What a cracking atmosphere. Yeah? And did you see the monk afterwards? Have you seen the monk interview? Huh? Have you seen which, the monk interview? Which one? The one that was on TV. No. He's lost his jumper. He's gone. The monk look has gone. Oh, okay. He lost his identity. Oh, what, after we all he said lost last his week composure. That we were come in. He yeah, lost yeah, his composure. Yeah. No, not monk. I'm on about Rowett. Sorry, yeah. Rowett lost his jumper. Oh, Rowett. Rowett. Yeah, oh, gone for a different look. Yeah, lost, his Rowett lost his identity. Lost his composure. Lost his integrity by getting sent off mm, and lost the game. Lost the game. Beautiful. So Beautiful. Welcome back. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. Love it. And I had chips. When are we having pullover week? I can't remember when oh, when yeah. monks in. Okay, we, we could. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've got to wait for Gary Gary's in. to come in. Yeah, yeah when Gary I actually in, had a chat yeah. with Mark Skinner, the okay. Blues women oh, manager, yeah, yeah. on Sunday, yeah. and he he messaged Gary after the win at Stoke just to say congratulations, and and Gary messaged him back saying thank you and good mm -hmm. luck for the for the game on Sunday, nice. and um and I said to I said to Mark like left to text him and, and ask him to come on the show and he said wouldn't it be great to have both club managers on the same show Ooh. Mark and Gary Monk oh, on the same show superb. managers of the men's and women's team on the same absolutely show absolutely superb that would be yeah. that would be amazing wouldn't it uh, thank make you it Mrs Brown make it up thank you yeah. Mrs Brown right two competition winners this week Wendy Mills with uh, We're Within Sight for the caption mm -hmm. the three word review We're Within Sight of We're what? Within Sight it doesn't really matter oh okay but We're Within Sight right okay <laughs> and Andrew Whitehouse with Teamwork Gets Results Teamwork Gets Results so okay. there you go uh, true, true. I'm sure Mrs Brown will be windling yeah. some hats and bits and pieces get in touch get in touch way, on the way to you very shortly yeah get in touch with the Tilt and Talk page and we'll get that sorted out now, after the game uh, at Stoke, there was a bit of bother in the Fiverside car park. Um, don't know whether you know know about that or not. There was and a bit was... of bother after the game, full stop, should we say. <laughs> yeah. um, I, I didn't go, so I can't... No, I, I can't I've had no. a couple of questions, tweets today about it. <clears throat> um, there was discussion between the police, the club, whether they were going to do a hold back at the end of the game. Yep. On Saturday, I wouldn't mind a hold back any time. Um, I, I, it doesn't bother me. And, and I think this shows there's a massive, massive difference um, in fans who who would, yeah, yep, quite happily have a hold back, and yep. those who are dead against yep. it. As long as I've got some refreshments and a toilet and this, that, and the other. <laughs> yep. <laughs> hold us back for what? Is, what is? What's the maximum you could hold back for? Well. If you look at the whole, if you look at the whole, ninety minutes last year. Is that an Andrews. operational decision based on what's going on outside the football? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Is, which is yeah. absolutely I'll fine. Be perfectly a whole back should probably last 10, 15 minutes. Right. It, it, sort of in an ideal I world. I remember there's, Millwall there's three, away sorry, in the playoff semi-final back in oh, one, and we got out of the car park about half three in the morning. There's three, three things that I would want. There's three things I would want from from you and from the football club. Number one, as I say, is refreshments. Number two is a toilet. And number three is information. Yep. Yeah. Uh, and I don't think we get the latter. I don't know whether we get re refreshments. I've never been in a whole back situation. What blues? Uh, yeah. Well, the, 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 the <clears throat> refreshments case would be the, the club catering, but yeah, normally okay. they close them at half time, yeah. don't they? Yeah. So. Yeah. For, for, for Villa fans at Blues, the last two seasons, the back was done. They, they were told beforehand open. it was going to happen. Yeah. Um, the catering was kept open. The toilets were kept open, which is down to Birmingham City Football yeah. Club, nobody yeah. else. Yeah. 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 And information was given both informed, by the police... Yeah. And by the club, yeah. should a hold back last ninety minutes? Never, no. never ever should a hold back last ninety that's minutes. That's one and a half hours. That's yeah. as long as this show goes. But on that was yeah. due to the trouble that was happening outside. But then, even if there was, uh, even, even, right, as, as my in my situation, right, I, I could sort of have my grandchildren with me or whatever, whatever, whatever. What's an hour and a half towards their safety? Nothing to me, mm. nothing at all. So, and that, you it's inconvenient. That. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. yeah? 
But yeah. I would rather be able to walk that child home safely, knowing that um, you know that I could get back to the car, etc., or, or the train, or what, whichever medium we, we, we're using. Um, knowing that, that that the kids are safe, yeah, even it, the oldest kids. Obviously, my oldest in an ideal 30, world, you know yeah. I mean? you, you know, I think it, it varies as well. It depends. <laughs> if you know, Villa Blues, you you're probably catching a train back to Sutton Caulfield or wherever you you know. It's not a massive great deal if you're in London and you've got to get back to. Mm. Obviously, they're not living in the city centre, are they? Because that's all Blues. That's not Villa at all. So, <laughs> but, um, <laughs> no. But um, like, if you've got. Um, Blues travelling away to Arsenal and something happens and there's a hold back and people have got to get back from Houston and things. It, it, an hour and a half hold back would be a big big, big difference, wouldn't it? It'd yeah, be a I big, mean, the last train into my town is 9 o'clock in the evening. Well, That's it. Yeah. I've got one after that. So, you know, it could be a big disruption, but you mentioned the, the trouble outside. How, how, if there's a hold back, so if Villa aren't allowed to come out, you know, even if a Villa... So if a Villa fan tried to leave with 15 minutes to go, purely... He's not interested in the football. He's there for the scrap. If he if he tried to leave with fifteen minutes to go, would he be able to get out of that ground? Well, we we had a bit of a discussion about this at the planning meeting the other week, didn't we? And uh, the, what's the cut off time where we say right? You ain't going, yeah, yeah. And and I think that's got to be fluid based yeah. upon the threat and risk outside, yeah, and the threat and risk inside as well. Yeah. So. There's no cold call where at this time everybody's staying in. Okay. It's got to be based upon threat and risk yeah. and, and a dynamic decision there and then, really. Yeah, so. yeah. That's fine. And just back to the Stoke gang, so I've had a couple of questions about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. There was no planned holdback. It had been discussed, and if those who remember were at Stoke 20, 25 years ago in the FA nil. Cup... No, oh, no, in the FA Cup, okay. might have been longer than that. To be fair, well, even that seven 0 one was uh, yeah. that was bad. They did the whole back in the FA Cup, yeah. And I think those people who know that, I don't have to remind them of what happened on that day. Yeah. But on Saturday, there was no planned hold back. It had been discussed. So basically, what happened? Both sets of fans were leaving at the same time. A number of Stoke fans gathered very close to the exit right. of where the Blues fans were coming out. Blues fans started exiting two, three minutes after the final whistle. And disorders took place between yeah. those two sets of fans. Due to what was happening, the police have then put a line in front of the Blues fans and pushed them back onto the coach park and held the Blues fans while the Stoke fans were cleared from the area. Now, I was out on the main road at that point. I don't know what messages were given. From what I've been told on Twitter, no messages were given. So if yeah. you were still right back near the stadium, if that makes sense. It's a big old coach yeah, park. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you probably didn't have a clue what was going on. And I've no doubt you thought you, the gates were closed and you were being held back in. Yeah. As I say, and during that time, on the main road, when Blues fans were being held, a number of people were being allowed out, if that makes sense. We had people come to us, elderly people, people with children, Kids, were yeah. allowed out to the yeah. side. But the situation was very volatile. There had been disorder. There was further disorder afterwards. Um, Stoke City and the police lay on <coughs> buses back to the station. Um, four buses, which sounds a lot, but when you've got a thousand plus by train, yeah. it isn't. Yeah. Well, um, Pen Penny would say, and you know, I'm sorry, but we were held back. Yeah, you were held back. There was no planned hold back, no, but a hold back then. Right, yeah, yeah, a right, hold back yeah. then did take place because right. of a trouble which had taken yeah. place outside the gates. But that decision is taken. As, an, as a notorious Ten fixture, minutes, right? spontaneously, and, yeah. Yeah. As, yeah. as a notorious fixture, and the history that's gone on between those two clubs, sets of supporters in the past, um, do you not think it would have been a good idea to advise there had been a hold, hold back? And, and are these things, you know, after you, you, you must have meetings after the events and this, that, and the other. Um, and you bring these up, well, could, you know, could we, should we, did we, yeah. didn't we? The thing is, you look, <clears throat> the last two holdbacks I can remember being put in place of Blues fans were um, West Ham in a Carling Cup semi-final yeah. when Blues that fans forced game, open yeah. the exit gates, which were closed shut. So that was the first, if you know what I mean, that's what, and Millwall last year was okay. another holdback right. where there was the disorder was not, in the coach compound. No, no, that was a day game on a Saturday. And the... One of the gates was nearly forced open, and that is when the police horses were sent into the compound for those who were there. So if you look at those two games, neither ended well. Yeah. Not at all. As in the first one, the gates were forced at West Ham, and at Millwall, officers and fans were injured with the whole back. Yeah. So it's weighing that up as well. Um, and as I say, you speak to like the Football Supporters Federation, people like that, 
and it really is a 50 50 split who thinks a whole back's a good idea and who's not and you can see that from my twitter feed yeah, so yeah, what, yeah, at, what, yeah. at what point at what point then do you um advise a whole back to the to the supporters the one we do at st andrews for the villa game the way st andrews is designed is good for a whole back right the villa fans have plenty of room underneath mm -hmm. the lower gill merrick in the concourse yeah Go, yep. up to the concourse you've got the ramp for those who've been in your way and it sounds silly a lot of Blues fans probably haven't been in your way, yeah. and if you, but you've got a long ramp going up to the coach park, and then you've got the coach park, which is quite a decent size, holds about 15, 18 coaches. So you've got plenty of room for a hole back. Whereas at Villa Park, Blade? No, I mean, the concourse areas of the Doug Ellis, where the away fans are, are totally unsuitable to hold anybody back, to be yeah, fair. Yeah. We couldn't do a hole back at Villa Park before away fans, just to the because of the size of the concourse areas yeah. and the confines that they're held in, it would be, I'd think, dangerous. Yeah, so. mm. yeah. But it really, it's a tough decision, and I don't think there's a right or a wrong. If you know, we should be at a stage we shouldn't have to hold fans no, back, should we? That's right. But the thing fans is, if, just you, be able if you to go leave. to that hold back, so if you say, if you say before the game, whatever happens, we're holding them back half an hour, and then ten minutes after the game, there's nobody outside. Mm. You, you'll get you'll get criticised. What was the point in holding us back? It, it's one of those situations you can't win, can yeah, you? You know what I mean. It's and as I say, but the way I look at it, ninety minutes for any sets of fans like the Villa fans had last year yeah. is totally unacceptable. And that was due to the level of violence which was taking place yeah. outside. And that violence was towards police officers at that point. It wasn't yeah. towards rival fans because yeah. the Villa fans were all still locked inside the ground. Yeah. Mm. Kevin Kelly, who picks up? The bill. Oh, 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 oh. Who, who, who picks up the bill? Here we go. <laughs> okay. This is quite Who good. picks up the bill for policing? Um, <laughs> do Sky or the clubs and are West Midlands Police the most expensive police in the UK, according to David Sullivan, ex chairman of Blues? <laughs> uh, certainly, <laughs> certainly not. Um, basically, we have we had various different agreements, and the one that, agreement that's in place is the Ipswich Agreement. Um, it basically sets out what a club can pay for uh, policing um, and, and what, what we do is we look at a footprint of a ground and if police are on that footprint then the club pay for those policing for the hours that they're on so you could have some police on po the footprint for six hours you could have police on the footprint for three hours they will pay so for would that. the footprint extend all the way down to mcdonald's island where, not where at all on, on the on derby no, day where not no at all. take no. for example and it is the same footprint for every game yes no matter what yes, oh, yes. Okay. Every yeah, game. so question, yeah. near enough the birmingham city footprint is the four corners of the stadium mm -hmm. and the car park so the away coach park right. the cop car park and the, and the main stand. stand yeah the road closure as it is now down to McDonald's. Sensible no. idea, by the way. No. Very um, sensible idea. It is like a sensible one. idea. And I say, the police cannot charge for putting staff on that main okay. road. And under the Ipswich Agreement as well, at Villa Park, we can't charge to put police right outside the away turnstiles. Can I pay because it's on a public road. So that wouldn't be club cost. Charged, so you've got no. officers on a public highway, which the club doesn't get charged for, yeah. and there's a disturbance inside the football ground, and those officers get called in. Do they then get charged for them officers that get called in? Yeah, the club can request other officers to come in, and they get charged if they do come onto the footprint. So the club has to request more police presence. <laughs> <laughs> it's a difficult one because yes they have basically the club have to request us in the first place we can't just rock up to the club and say we're policing on, this game on, on, next on. week <laughs> yeah but, uh, listen to my, from my point of view right okay yeah. there are 200 police officers outside st andrews on derby day right yeah there is a disturbance inside the football ground And because there is a civil disturbance, you're saying that you can't do anything about it? We can do something about it, and we will go in. But we don't unilaterally make that decision. The bronze commander will speak to the safety officer and yep. say, I've got more officers outside, shall we bring them do in to yeah. assist? Yeah. So it'll, it'll be a decision between the safety officer and the bronze commander. Yeah. It, it's virtually said, we need to bring these in. Yeah, so. uh, but I think we have got to remember, as Blake said, the football match is the club's event yeah. we are invited guests yeah, if that makes right, sense okay. but, then, you know. but then i'm working in a pub and we put a temporary events notice in because we want to have a dj in or something like that uh, yeah. that then becomes a public event uh, and there's trouble there say for instance there hasn't been don't get me wrong but um i don't know 
Are you paid multi-million pounds mm. to put that event on? Mm. Not paid multi millions of pounds, no. And is that a regular event then, that's on week but, in, but, week out that, then, that you know but about? But then a football club has got 20,000, 30,000 supporters coming in. But it's um, also got. The, the pub's got 30, 40, 50 people going in. It's a very the, big difference. So the, the, but the features are announced in June. Hmm. So the, the club knows in months and months and months in advance hmm. when their game against this club is going to be played. And they've got stacks of time to work out what they need and how many people mm. they need around it. Another very interesting question here for Benji Smith. How did West Midlands Police feel about skydiving talk show hosts <laughs> and how many fatalities have they seen from skydiving? <laughs> We're trying to get him to do one. It's not happening. It's not happening. <laughs> Give it up, everyone. That would I've got to say, I would like to see that. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, I'll, I'll bet. Buzz Rock wants to know who polices K2. K two. Yeah, there was a and question the, here as well. Are you Robert Doyle? Are you cheaper per person than the security inverted commas company that steward the game? Not at all. Um, the issue with K two, Birmingham City, Birmingham City fans. Um, I'm sure most of you are aware. A meeting was held between various parties. Yeah. Um, the police were there. K two were there. Which I've got to say, whatever your thoughts on K two. Fair play to K2 MD for turning up on that night because I have no doubt as a private company, a lot of other companies probably wouldn't have turned mm. up. Um, Birmingham City Safety Officer was there, representatives of Birmingham City were there, and then thanks to um, Dave Dave Brown, um, sports liaison, he got about 10, 12 fans there as well wow. from Block 4 and the surrounding areas, okay. and a meeting was held. Um, we all know the issues are not resolved in Block 4, yeah. not at all. However, a lot of that meeting has gone a little way to trying to ad address the problems. The club have taken on board, and say the club, the safety team have taken on board some of the suggestions. I know K2 have taken on board some of the suggestions. And from what I've seen in Block 4, um, clearly self-policing has taken place yeah. on those games since. And when I say self-policing, that's not people dragging people out of the way and making citizens arrest. Mm. That's just people perhaps saying to other people, come on step back, move away from the barrier, and, you, and I, I've seen that for myself. Mm -hmm. um, but as I say, in relation to K2, K2 provide two to three hundred stewards every game at Birmingham City. And I think the other, you know... Do you think it's necessary to have that many? I mean, I was at the Rotherham game. It, it's because it's also due to yeah. safety certificate. And Blade will probably tell so you the best... So that will be through the councils, etc. Yeah, yeah. That, okay, Blade will probably tell the best example was from the Villa Albion Cup game, wasn't it? Yeah. In relation to stewarding Where numbers. Where the club were criticised for having too few stewards. Right. Mm. So, and if you remember that, was where they like, ran on the pitch, yeah, yeah I can't. Because I'm not being funny, right? From a football supporter's point of view, now my my I met my brother at St Andrews last week against the Rock Rotherham, and that was his first game since the 70s. He lives out in New Zealand and brought his wife with him. That was her first game whatsoever, and we were sat right down the front by the goal. And five minutes before time, all the K2 stewards come out with their bright oranges on, and it frightened her after death. The poor woman, she'd never seen anything like it. And she says, oh, there's going to be trouble. There's going to be, there's there's going to be no trouble. Stewards please. are always deployed sort of at the front towards the end of the game. Yeah. Um, I say, it's one of those, it's a very difficult situation, but I think another thing that I will say in relation to stewarding full stop, especially the K2 thing, two to three hundred stewards is what they provide. People say, just go and get another company. Um, you ain't going to find another company with two to three hundred uh, registered um, exactly because they all no. have to be SIA registered and that don't they? Yeah. So, yes. uh, people say get Birmingham City's own stewards well I know how hard the safety team work each summer you've probably seen the adverts they put out constantly trying to recruit mm -hmm. staff during the summer especially mm -hmm. they don't get those numbers no. they don't and those numbers they do get As someone and we're not going to be disrespectful now but many of those stewards are young females what chance would they stand really really uh, I think the thing is, if you speak to the safety... It's a presence, and it's an orange jacket, yeah. and I understand all that. But if, if anything was to properly kick off, right, the, the three parts of them wouldn't stick a chance. But then you've got to look at what the role of a steward is. Is a steward's yeah. role to get stuck in and, and move people out? Think, or is think, a steward's yeah. role there to, uh, to, as part of the safety yeah. of the event? Mm. OK, get that. I, that, that, and that. And that's a big... Mm. And I think that's a big thing and a big complaint that... Not only block four, other other supporters have about K two, mm. is that by the point your your role as a steward is not to go wading in and kicking off and and you know 
aggravating any I know you can't speak for K2, you don't are. work for them. I, don't, I know that. No, like, that's I think right. there are instances where that has been the case. Mm. Mm. Going don't, back to don't policing. get me wrong, stewards can use uh, reasonable force mm. to eject somebody. Well, anybody somebody. can, can't they? Yeah, yeah they? and anybody yeah. can yeah. to use reasonable force to, to eject yeah. somebody from the stadium. And our role is to allow that to happen, but to be there to step in to prevent a breach of the peace. Yeah. How good is the CCTV at St Andrews? Excellent. I know. I have heard. Um, they have installed, and many grounds have in the West Midlands, <clears> spent <throat> thousands upon thousands installing CCTV and upgrading CCTV. I can assure you it is absolutely excellent, mm -hmm. as it is at Villa Park, as it is at most of the West Midlands, as it is all around the country. OK, Paul Hipkiss, uh, why did we have to ship in loads of Welsh police for the last Villa game at St Andrews? We did it once. We did it for the first, first game time. back in the Championship, so season before last. Years ago, yeah. Basically, that comes under what we call mutual aid. We can request officers from other forces. Right. Um, that costs us money. That doesn't come free, if you know what I mean, getting officers from other other forces. So that doesn't go into the football club's budget because most of them were outside? Yep. Right. Um, so that Westminster Police would pay to get officers from other areas. The reason they do it is because we've only got so many police officers. Yeah. If you know, so to ease the burden on Westminster Police... Especially on a Sunday dinner time. You go, <laughs> to, you go to another force and you get officers. The thing is, um, I, the feedback we've had, and it was brought up in the debrief we had... Um, it didn't work on that day mm. with officers from Wales, right. for whatever reason that is. Um, will we be doing it again? No. No. We, I mean, we cancelled the consensus we'll of opinion, though, when I looked on social yeah, media, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, com the consensus of opinion of Birmingham City supporters, right, and I'm one of them, um, was that um, some of them had just come down for the day, if you know what I mean. Um, well, they were on duty for one day for about 12 hours in in Birmingham mm. um, we send officers out of force quite regularly to police football matches in different force areas to, to police events in different force areas as I say and it's a difficult situation to be in your Sunday dropped for want of a better term to work that game yeah. Probably, well it is the biggest game in the West Midlands um, and as I say you're working with a community that's not your community as yes, well. Yes, yeah, of course. So yeah. you, you, you've got no ownership of yeah, it, have you? Right. And that's the problem. We want officers that own that community. Mm. And we want officers that are going to be there next week to as well to face. The Blues Villa don't, game. Don't, look, look, this is this is a great forum tonight for you you two guys to get your faces um, with all these supporters out here. And this will be looked at by 30-odd thousand people over the next 24 hours or so. Um, uh, you know, do, do, do you think that sometimes you alienate yourselves from football supporters? That's what the Westminster Police Force Football Unit are trying to get over. And that's, things like this, things like this are brilliant for like, bringing assured, people together. I don't think there'll be another force in the country, football unit, who would turn up on a radio show like yeah, this. Right. Yeah. I, I don't think there would be. I, I can say that no. hands down, hand on heart. Not oh, there to press officer in. I can understand you coming, but a Wolves fan, you know. What yeah. I mean? <laughs> <laughs> We've got Dingle. Yeah. Dingle's in the midst. <laughs> but no, as I say, you know, Twitter was the first way we tried to engage. We probably started Twitter yeah. five, yeah. six years yeah. ago now. There's a um, number of other clubs who have yeah. got their police force. Yeah, we've got the around, Independent yeah. Advisory Group, which is the first in the country, mm -hmm. which is made up of near enough two fans from each of the six West Midlands club right. and that is now we are an invited guest of the independent advisory group if you know what I mean we chaired the first one classed as trailblazers now I believe yeah and then it was handed over to them that takes place once a month and at the last meeting we had West Yorkshire Police yeah. Bedfordshire Police and the Metropolitan Police all come to see the work we do yeah. don't get me wrong we've still got work to do we're not saying we're perfect no. please don't ever imagine we're saying we're perfect because we're mm. not however we're trying to engage more you know and that is massive it is. For, for we we try, massive. and we will take it's, on. It's, we'll when, take... when we played Bruges, we played Bruges away, and then Bruges came to play at St Andrews, right? When we played over in Bruges, the reception that we got from the the, the people and and, uh, and the police and everybody over there was second to none. We were welcomed into that city. When the guys from Bruges came into Birmingham on a freezing cold Tuesday night, they were herded up from New Street with dogs, right? And I got a six-year-old child in my hand. Uh, and I was um, walking from the housing estate at the, the bottom of the coach park, right, the, the away coach park, walking through the housing estate onto the Coventry Road, and there was this dog leaping up at a six-year-old child, right, and this, the police officer roaring at me, get the kid away from the dog. I said, get the dog away from the kid. He's got it on a lead, right? There was absolutely zero need for those people to be welcomed into the city of Birmingham like that on that night because all we wanted to do was mix with them, shake their hands, give them a hug, and say, what an absolute wonderful time everybody had over in Bruce. Thank you very much. And then they were just herded like sheep down a, you know, 
washing well. You know what I mean? Mm. In a sense, I know I've had me say. No, but, I, but it's different. I think I think it's different. You know, listen, I, I can't. I didn't go to brewers, so I don't know what the no. But we've all the seen the videos. Was, uh, we've uh, seen the videos that yeah, they're all over YouTube, yeah, but Chris. Look at. And I know maybe Bruges is different to Spain, but look at look at how the away fans are treated in Spain and, I know, and Italy I know, yeah, yeah. and things like that. And, we and we then, both policed around the world because we've both been England spotters, yeah. and we whenever we go and That's police, a pretty good job, eh? Whenever, mm-hmm. whenever we go and police, we have England fans coming up to us while we're there and saying. We don't know how lucky we are to have you. Yeah, uh, but yeah. that's all forgotten when we go back. <laughs> no, when course, we get back course. in the season, yeah, yeah. but they they experience the policing who yeah. who don't have any escalation plans. No. They go from zero to four in tier yeah. gas, whereas there's no there's no communication, there's no social media or anything yeah. like that. And we care. Like I said, these are our communities. We've got a buy in. We care about our communities. We take it personal. I've travelled. 80 mile round trip to be here tonight to talk to you on my mm-hmm. rest day because I care and I want we want to get our views across to you. And yeah. like I say, a forum like this is a, it's a great way of doing yeah. it because it is a, uh, going out live and what we say is what we say is what is going out. Yeah. The people are listening to what you're yeah. responding and how you're responding. Uh, and, and I can't thank you enough for coming. No, to, to yes, we, we both attended because this is something we as a show have forums as well for, yeah. for years. We, we regularly attend fans' forums at Blues, at Villa, at different supporters' clubs, mm. and we've got no issue, you know, in going those. And we will take on people's criticism, we will take on people's ideas as well, yeah. and we regularly do. Well, we, we, often, we often invite them in and say, we're looking at this, is there any way we can do it better? And we're asking people who have been to that game 20, 30 years, yes. we're only policing it for the last three years, yeah. so we're saying to you, Experience, what do you think, yeah. what can we do better? And we take those on board mm. and then um, we put it into practice yeah absolutely yeah. Mm. robert Dawes made a very good yeah, point uh what is a washing well well a washing yeah. well, you know whether sheep, sheep down a washing well <laughs> 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 well i've got a bit of clarification <laughs> on what what on earth is a washing well <laughs> you knew what i meant <laughs> <laughs> I, I just, I, I was a bit embarrassed as a football supporter and as a Birmingham City fan to see those people treated like that on that night. To be honest with you, when when there was zero trouble in Bruges, nothing, nothing, no, no issues whatsoever. Everybody was having a Did good time of? drinking. So oh, come on, we'd have heard that. I thought, if there was, if Anybody there was out there go to Bruges see any trouble? Right? Okay, they'll have that yeah. answer me in a second. <laughs> <laughs> there could be enough of them out. There's, play, there's plenty of them there, so someone should, yeah. Yeah, sorry we can't read out all of your posters. Absolutely, yeah, hundreds keep and them coming now. Them coming through. We'll try and get them. Um, can you mention a couple? Can you mention uh, one? Hats off to West Midland, please. Good Absolutely. show. Keep the lights on. Nice one. See. Yeah. yeah. Well said, Nick. Says somebody says. Well, you know. Uh, Benji said, "Fair if, play." If, if you're not here to answer, what are you here for? Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Because right. the yeah. thing is, on Twitter. You, you've only got so many characters. Yeah. Or, yeah. Or you just, things can come across differently. Exactly. Or yeah. you answer four or five different yeah. questions on the same one, and people misread it, or I misread it, yeah. and then somebody else puts a comment in before you've answered it, yeah. and you're answering the wrong question. Where is this? It's the ideal sort of platform yeah. to do it. Yeah. Uh, Dogger and washing bowls. Come on, Nick. <laughs> Dogger. <laughs> That was last week's. Uh, it was. A deliberate Gary mistake. Fletcher says, yes, there was trouble. Yeah, Bruce. I've just seen that one. Okay. Um, <laughs> Jess McDonald says, I was there and there was no trouble. Um, so I dare, I dare say. And I think this, this is always the thing, be. isn't it? Is that yeah. for one person who's seen something, like Stoke, I'm, saying, I'm yeah, sure yeah, some yeah. fans will say they never saw a thing. Yeah. Other fans will say, and you can see I some think, of the stuff on well, Twitter saying there was goading the Birmingham City Steve supporters. Portland's. The man that was goading the Birmingham City supporters in the Five Aside car park on uh, Saturday had the word Essex written on his back so that might be a nice big help for you not <laughs> go go Steve Portman and then I'm going to very yeah, Steve, serious Steve Portman put a comment earlier he left with five minutes to go I think from the Stoke game and he come out oh, and, Steve's no about to sports, no, and he yeah. just yeah. went straight out it was, so. it was also noticeable to see yeah. I know Blue scored a late goal which will always change things yes, home fans course, a little bit. Yeah, yeah. but what I did notice I was outside I went outside shortly after Blue scored so with what Injury time and the guy, probably about 10 12 minutes, yeah. Ago. And it was noticeable at that point there was an awful lot of Stoke fans leaving with young children, yeah. And from comments I was hearing from these fans, it was quite clear why they were leaving early. And that wasn't because their team was losing, they knew what was I happening. think they probably knew what 
could have happened. I was feeding on yeah. social and media. And it's sad, but you did. For me to yeah, see children yeah. in tears at the end of the game because of the trouble Horrible. taking Violet. place. I can't they, stand it for anybody, no. not from our supporters, no. not for anybody else. And to see five, six year old children in tears, they're the next generation of football yeah, fans. Yeah, yeah. And to see them in tears being carried down the road. And these mm. were both Blues and Stoke fans in tears as mm -hmm. well. Mm. And, and the ladies. Mm. Uh, I need to chill out pill I'm too lively yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Keith Smith says no trouble gone. I was in Bruges I was one of the 2000 without tickets right out with no trouble so perhaps it was a little bit somewhere but I don't know but I mean yeah. uh, but but all I can say is that all the videos that I've ever seen is that, is that the Bruges authorities and the Bruges city centre welcomed Birmingham City with open arms and we welcomed them with dogs and I don't think that was right Okay. That's my opinion. No. There we go. Steve Gill says, respect to the guys. Can Absolutely. you bring them in after the Villa game and give us an update on how the game went? Yeah, by all means. Yeah, Would yeah. you do that? By yeah, all of course you will. Super. Of course all right, we're going on to another serious um, uh, situation. Two minutes, right? But also I've got to say uh, congratulations to everybody who took part in uh, Dev's um, charity, charity yes, football yes. game against Wolves Old Stars on Sunday. Thank you for everybody that turned up there and uh, and supported the uh, the cause of uh, Little Annie. Bless her. Yeah. yeah. Um, right, okay. Yeah, don't I forget. wanted to just mention some as well quickly yeah, of course, of course. Um, on Twitter. Uh, obviously, uh, the blues, the blues Twitter, and and the guys of blue. Everybody has been uh, recently have been fantastic with supporters, haven't they? The 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 little lad you mentioned yes. at the yeah. start who died. Yeah, Gary yeah. put a, a really nice oh, tweet no, out. It's lovely. Um, mm. You know, and the, and the players have been around to ground. And I noticed Djokovic put a comment, uh, put a little thing up for Beth Capewell as well. Now, I, I don't know Beth personally, but as someone who, up until a few years ago, was a regular home and away supporter, I know of Beth. And I've seen her around away games and things like that. And I know mm. she's going through a pretty difficult time at the moment. So, thoughts with yeah. with Beth as well at this time and hopefully she she gets better soon and, and starts to feel better and uh, anybody who wants to mention for whatever reason we're always we're always up for um oh, yeah. helping people out as well mm -hmm. yeah Definitely. that's that's part of the cause part of the cause uh, yeah. craig cox still waiting for a reason why west midlands police can't control bluesville on a saturday three o'clock but the met can control multiple games in and around london some high risk especially traveling fans into london I, I believe one of the questions that we had was um, the old firm Derby. Yep. Were they allowed 8,000 fans? Yeah. We actually looked that up, and the last allocation of the last game just 796 gone. was the allocation Rangers got at Celtic this season. Why that was, I don't know. And yes, really? in previous yeah, years, true, yeah. it was 8,000 the allocation both ways. So I dropped it to 700. 796. Celtic get the whole end um, behind yeah, that. I, I, say, though, don't like yeah. I can find that answer yeah. out, and I will speak to Police Scotland why that was the case. but. Yeah, that's that's a huge drop from 8,000 to mm, 800. Crazy, it's a massive yeah. drop. Yeah. Um, but I say, other forces, it's down to other forces at the end of the day, if you know what I mean, when they want that game. The other thing is, Blues and Villa want the game at 12 o'clock on a Sunday. They both want it. The two clubs yeah, want it at 12 o'clock right, okay. on a Sunday. And, and the thing then so is, they've said, they've said at the start of the season, it should be 12 o'clock on a Sunday. Yeah. The EFL have then published the game as 12 o'clock yeah. on a Sunday. So we have to then cancel rest days for all the officers. Mm -hmm. If you want to change that after that, we've then got to reinstate rest days so everybody's made plans for the yeah, Saturday and so the yeah, Sunday. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. people would know that that day is... Yeah. They're not going to but again, this is the point we're making. The clubs both the ask clubs. for that game at 12 o'clock. Say out of the blue, the, the Sunday one, this Sunday, the, the away game goes off no problem. No, no, no issue whatsoever. <laughs> Part of the odd usual nonsense um, and everything goes smoothly 12 o'clock kick off come March the home game both teams are in the playoffs EFL and the Sky come along and say top of the table clash we want this Saturday night at 5.30 <laughs> um, <laughs> we, to be fair and the club say and they obviously say they they throw enough money at it and the club say ok go on then Okay, so then we go to the SAG and we'd say, here are the reasons why this game shouldn't go ahead at 5.30 on a Saturday. Yeah. Um, but ultimately, it's not our decision. Okay? Yeah. okay. It's then down to the safety advisory group and the, the council who are yeah. the, with the safety certificate. If they want to alter the S factor at all to limit the number of people attending. Yeah. Um, I'd better explain the PS. So have actually, that fixture. 
council holds sway more than anybody. They he already formed if by he got us, that far. Yeah, if, if he, he got, got that far. far. Oh. But I, I genuinely don't think Birmingham City or Aston Villa would ever come to Westman's place and say, can we play that game at 5.30? Yeah. Yeah. Because what you've got to think of is after the the Blues-Villa game in the League Cup where there was the mass pitch invasion. At Blues, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Blues were threatened with points deductions and everything and yeah. fines, weren't they? Yeah. And then after the Villa-West Brom quarter-final at Villa yeah. Park, Same they were point. also... Yeah. I mean, quarter of a million pound fine Villa got and threatened with points deduction as a result. So they're not going to put their Just clubs the worth, yeah. in that yeah. position because ultimately that could be a lot of money down the line, couldn't yeah. it? It could be the difference yeah, between course. promotion <laughs> or relegation. Yeah. So just so, Beecham, we all know how hard Blues is. Uh, we all know that Blues is the hardest game out of the two to police. Hats off to the old Bill when we go to the Villa. They have nailed it to a T. Don't see a Villa fan until we get to the stadium. I was going to ask that. I was going to say, what's the Blues fans' verdict yeah, you, on the policing say. operation at oh, Villa? Because the last time I went was that Tuesday night game. A few under Rowie. Come back under the new one because he's changed completely. Yeah. Oh, okay. and, th and there was. <laughs> I'd love to bloody get a ticket to me. <laughs> yeah. And, and yeah. on that cup game, that was the last well, game. There were no yeah. restrictions in place. When I say restrictions, that was which way Blues fans would come yeah. in, which way Blues could leave. Yeah. For anybody who went to that cup game that night, they will know from about seven o'clock till kick off, there was serious disorder all the way down Whitton Lane between yes. Blues and Villa fans. Yes. Hence the reason restrictions. We had this have plan. In place. We had this plan, and we wanted to put it in place for that fixture. But okay. it was considered too bold to put that plan in place. But after big, uh, phase one, which is big, before the game, mm. and all the problems we had, they then said, right, we're putting your plan in place for phase three. And for then the, we, after the game. Yeah, yeah and okay. then we put that plan in place and there was no issues virtually right. after the game then. So then it was just tweaked a little bit for the games. Yeah. And now the metal barriers are put across the road, the vans are put across the road. And if you can buy the coach or train, people still, because I had one the other day saying, why do you make us come by train? We don't. We don't make you come by train. Yeah. Numerous people <laughs> catch the bus there. Numerous people yeah. drive there. Numerous people, you know, yeah, um, yeah, it, yeah. it's your personal choice. There's no restrictions. The only restrictions are in which way you can actually get you to those away turnstiles. Enter. You can yeah. only enter the away turnstiles from one, one area. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the rest of the ground is virtually cut off from that. So yeah. Well, that game, we, I, I work, we've got a client who, who is by the Tesco, yeah. just, just down the road. Um, from the OI turnstiles, and that, that our clients is just there, so I used their car park and mm. drove yeah. down and, and got yeah. there. So, I mean, yeah. Blues fans, we're <laughs> always if you're going to park, park up Brookvale Road because that'll give you the easiest access into the. Yeah, yeah I was going to go there anyway. <laughs> <laughs> okay, got to uh, mention KNBP, which is kids need both parents. Don't forget to visit their shed outside their, their office. Sorry, outside the um, the cop main st uh, the cop stand yeah. uh, tomorrow evening. I'm sure they'll all be Saturday, there all loaded yeah. up yeah, uh, all Saturday. Saturday. Uh, BHST, an appeal bumper out for rucksacks and clothes, please. Rucksacks and clothes. Oh, we've got a couple of rucksacks. Yeah. Yeah. Rucksacks, we've if you've got them, yeah, yeah, you bring them in. Yeah. I'll drop them at the Conservative Club on my way back next well, week. I'll bring them in next week. Lovely, I've got there's two. stuff in my car. So you have, if you want to bring your stuff here, I'll, I'll take it all up at once. Perfect, okay. So um, yeah, stuff if here. everybody that's listening tonight wants to bring all their stuff to Chris <laughs> Brown's house. To be honest, I don't mind. He genuinely doesn't mind because what we'd get is the lads with a van to come and pick it up on next Monday night. Always a bit nice to drop them in and uh, and, and see it. Right, okay, well, here's one for you then, gentlemen. Uh, we've got a game at St Andrews tomorrow night under the floodlights. It's going to be a big old crowd there. Um, there's a lot of excitement buzzing around the Blues at the moment. The, the team's doing absolutely brilliant. The manager is, is like a god to us. And um, we're welcoming Reading Football Club into Birmingham tomorrow night. Now, there has been some tweets from at Y26 Ultras. I am aware of those tweets today. Aware. <laughs> Yeah. Now, whether that is a 12 year old kid on a keyboard trying yes. to wind people up, yeah. or, or whether that is a serious threat to people's life, um, at this point in time, you probably don't know. We in have, all fairness. No, we don't. We have no idea. Now, I, I did reply to one of the tweets earlier, not from that account direct, but somebody who sent it yep. to me. We deal, we spend a horrendous amount of our time dealing with tweets, which are put out on yeah. other social media platforms. There's two in the last couple of weeks which are. Hate crime, no other word for them. Mm -hmm. um, one that came in on Saturday well, that, after the Wolves. That, would that be classed as hate crime, threatening to kill Birmingham no. City supporters? No, but no. But what I'm saying is, as in, so th you can threaten to kill with. somebody. Is that is that is that no, acceptable? You can't. No, but you can't. No, this, hate is what, yeah. this, is where, this is where I'm getting yeah. to with yeah, the whole. Yeah. It yeah. wouldn't. Be, it wouldn't be a hate crime. Right. Okay. Um, hate crime. The, what, the other one we dealt with was a disability. 
that was that was what the, the tweet Vile, was about. Was was, yep. Vile. And so one that came in Saturday was was identical as well. Yeah. Um, so I so say we deal with an awful lot. There's a fine line between banter and what oversteps the mark and somebody takes great offence. Yeah. Do I think somebody putting a picture of a knife on the end of those tweets? What an idiot. Correct. What an absolute tool. Now, how do I how do I know? How do Westminster Police know whether that is serious or, like you say, Absolutely. some twelve year old kid mm -hmm. sat on his laptop in his bedroom? He's never been to a football game. Yeah, but you can see from the replies, for everybody who's saying <clears throat> you're an idiot, you know, there's clearly some people who may be thinking, genuinely may be thinking, what's this all about? Yeah. If you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah. And this is the problem. Social media is brilliant to get your message across, but then when you've got people tweeting we're going to bring 70 80 lads to you tomorrow night with a picture of a knife mm. and if you read some of his other tweets he's put on regarding carrying knuckle dusters and things <laughs> you know as i say how how am i supposed to take that mm. um is that something to be taken seriously or as you say is that some 12 year old kid who really should be doing something better at the age of 12 mm. probably like his homework mm. yeah um probably not a 12 year old kid probably a little bit older than i would have thought um i doubt it i don't know i don't, don't know, know. And right. this that, would, that would be my that would be but yeah that and, I, and I'm sure you guys as well you're, you're sitting there probably thinking oh yeah this is the last thing we need now idiots like this but, yeah it is but, you know <laughs> but it is but the last because, thing we because it's going to be tomorrow because night it's going to be a great occasion say you do occasion. nothing about it mm -hmm. Say say you take no interest whatsoever and then say so yeah, lads up do the come up and stab yeah, someone absolutely. exactly it, it is uh, this is what we're and where do you draw that line it's very difficult. We categorise each fixture and we do a risk assessment. It's not a finger in the air and say we're going to put 50 places on I that. could do that risk assessment for you. Exa you know. Because I've been going since 1972. Yeah. yeah. Now, you can imagine hard, Birmingham it? against Reading on a Tuesday night with probably 500 ish, 600 away 600 fans away yeah. is a low risk game. Yeah, yeah, Nobody yeah. else yeah. would say any different no, to yeah. that. 100%. However, then you start reading chummy on the internet mm -hmm. what do you suddenly start thinking yeah. do we suddenly go let's press the panic button and get 200 police officers yeah, yeah, yeah. one well, tweet how many brum fans will be unconscious after the game on tuesday mm. what an absolute numpty what yeah. a stupid yeah. moronic little individual you are whoever you are if you can is that's all you can do for your life goodness gracious me get Stephen Cow says so how how have the tweets been treated at the moment i've reported that account to twitter right, sadly yeah how quick Twitter work, I can probably think that account will still be there in a week's yeah. time, two weeks' time. Jess yeah. McDonald's, I'm sure the police can track the IP address. Yeah, we can. You can do, yeah, we can. you can do. Again, that, that's, again not takes a, that's not a quick thing to yeah. do. Um, and this has been in the news as well with um, messages sent to Karen Carney. Wayne Mellon. Um, yeah, exactly. Oh, oh, what a disgrace like that. that was, man. Um, that was, I was livid, incensed. Yeah. You know, yeah. so it's, <clears throat> unfortunately, it's a, it's the downside of one of the downsides of social media, it is, isn't it? Yeah. It is, yeah, but we do we do investigate a <coughs> number of allegations <coughs> of sort of hate crime from Twitter. Yeah. And you say most people read these and are absolutely disgusted. What mm. makes it worse is that sadly when these tweets come out, you then see people retweeting and liking what yeah. the person. Yeah. Well, you're as bad as the person yeah, who's actually yours, written that yeah, tweet yeah. in the first uh, place. Wayne Merrick, surely you should then treat that threat as a real one. I think it's something you're keeping in your heads. Uh, so have the tweets been taken by yourself? Da 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 da. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, OK. We're into the last 15 minutes, people. And uh, the share competition results are going to come out now. We're going to get one of you wonderful gentlemen to uh, pull out a, t a ticket out of our... I'll let Tilt you pick talk. it out as soon as you're... Tilt and Talk, player. Trillion the Trophies Trophy. Who wants to do it? This well, is, Colin's um, going to do it. Nobody would want to be... And the, the winner, winner of the, the shares competition... The Villa Football Officer pulling the name. this week is... <laughs> Dun, 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 dun. John McDonald. John McDonald, there you go, John. Get in touch with the Tilton Talk Show and we'll get some prizes off to you. It is, of course, the world famous Tilton Talk Show on a Monday night and it is the last 15 minutes. Now, gentlemen, what we do in the last 15 minutes on the Tilton Talk Show, we do have a little bit of a comedy going on. And uh, as we've got West Midlands Loosely. Police in with us tonight, the theme, the theme is going to be anything to do with police and football. Okay, so any word association that you can keep do with police clean. and football. Now keep it yeah. clean, absolutely keep it clean. Because don't forget, these two, <laughs> these two guys are reading every message you come through. Right, I'm going to start you off with one that I saw earlier, which was brilliant, which was old Bill Shankly. There you go, old oh, Bill no. Shankly. Okay. Uh, and then also have your score predictions for tomorrow night, please, if we could do that. Can over also say extra minutes. points if Karen Brady is not included. Yeah, or yeah. Jeff Horsfield, or, or Jeff Hill, or, <laughs> or pork pies, or meat. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear, dear me! 
Um, so, so yeah, going back to that tweet, that's something that you're keeping in your mind. Yeah, um, I'll, we'll keep it in mind. As I say, it, it, it's a difficult situation. We get this this all the time, sadly. As I said, um, tomorrow, as you can imagine, <laughs> Paul Gill says, "Sorry, that's just killed the watching figures." <laughs> yeah. it's, a, it's, it's a low category game, like it should be between Birmingham and Reading. The other yeah. thing we've got to remember: it comes to policing. It's not we're not there purely the violence and disorder side, not at all. You've got to remember the world we live in, sadly, at the moment. Yeah. And you mentioned it before, Nick, in relation to the road closure. We now have taser officers, which are officers armed with taser. We have firearms officers on duty as well. Uh, and that is purely the public reassurance side and sadly was, the world we live in now as well. Was that a credible threat that had been made to the club that you'd caught wind of that made Not that at road all, closure? No. 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 I mean, it, from, from what we saw in Nice... Yeah, and then yeah. we, we felt that we needed to protect ourselves yeah. for a niche type attack, yeah, yeah, and then we saw yeah. a copycat. So we started to introduce road closures. Yeah, really after the niece attack, okay. really. And that's is it, that, uh, 2016. Oh, but that road, that road closure also, also, also facilitates yeah, that. Yes, it's, a yes, lot it's lot replicated car. across all of them. It does. To me, there was a lot of. I wouldn't say criticism. That's probably the wrong word. A lot of people were very skeptical when that road closure was brought in. However, now. You, you can see it at the end of the game. The, the crowd's clear much quicker. Yeah, I think they I, do. I think yeah, the, the yeah. club have worked out around, give or take a few, 10,000 people go down the commentary road at the end of the game. Right. Got to be, and at least. That road closure is normally lifted by 10 past quarter past five. Yeah. Now, if you think gone of a day the game's finishing at quarter to five, let's be honest, you're normally yeah, there till five, five o'clock now, yeah, aren't you? Absolutely. So that road clears within 15, 20 minutes. Now, I'm sure if you look back in years gone by when there was cars going up and down the road, Terrible, buses, horrible. you were walking on the pavement, people were weaving Squeezing in and out, in, yeah. and it probably took a lot, a lot longer. Yes, mm. we still get congestion. So the car park's right. closed? The car park is closed, you yeah, can't leave. because there used to be cars yeah. coming out. Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. it's yeah. terrible. It's closed decision. by the club to me, an absolutely on brilliant 75 decision. minutes. Yeah. 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 It's closed from near enough an hour before kick-off, but they're quite flexible with that. Yeah. And then, as I say, reopens about five minutes after kick-off and closes on 75 minutes. Uh, Buzz Rock, this is my first watch, and I'm very impressed. Keep right on. Thanks, Buzz. You can tune in every Monday night at 7.30 through till 9. Jez McDonough wants to know who pays for all your hats. <laughs> <laughs> Ourselves, really. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Love it, love it. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, three one the blues from Paul Smith, Andy Smith going four nil, Robert Do Doyle two one and Stephen Gill two two. Oh dear oh, me. No. Stephen we'll Gill, Gill Stephen Gill. Oh. Kev then Kelly, front row we'll base numbers in the UK have fallen from hundred and twenty six thousand to hundred and four thousand since twenty ten. Does this make it more difficult to provide the officers for public events? Yes. Yes, it really does. Mm. We're having we're, we're having to <laughs> Sorry, do Bobby Moore. <laughs> <laughs> good one. Very Bobby good. Ball, that's, that's a good one. <laughs> we're having to do a lot more with less, uh, and, and to be fair, we're under pressure to reduce resourcing by clubs. We're under pressure to reduce resourcing by our own supervision as well. Mm. So yeah, for yeah. those for those officers who were on duty at Stoke Blues, that was a cancelled rest day for Staffordshire Police. So mm. all those officers again, and there's a myth about police overtime as well. Those yeah. officers at Stoke on Saturday, a cancelled rest day is a cancelled rest day. You don't get paid for it. Um, so they've lost their day off to police the Stoke Birmingham game. Blues Villa, Villa Blues, that's a cancelled rest day for Westminster's police officers to ensure we get the number of officers out. So that's not. They don't even get paid normal wage? No, you get, you get, you get your normal you get your salary normal that pay, way. But they get to dictate the day you have off then. Okay. Right. Yeah. And how many rest days would you be expected to work a year? Um, it, it's getting more and more uh, this now, isn't it? So contractually, yeah. there's no sort of oh, everyone would do four. No, no. no. Okay, no all right. Okay, but right. for some of the smaller forces, a cancelled rest day happened very frequently. Not just really? football, for other yeah. events as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And as I say that there is a pressure. The Women's you know, Institute cake making. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, we're Play. constantly yeah. asked to reduce the resource we put on yeah. football, and we have reduced the numbers we put on football yeah. quite Great significantly. Stuff, right. Right. right, Stephen Cow two nil Blues, Pennywood three nil Blues, and Matthew Brown three nil. Bruise was us going for 2 0. 1 0. Hello, lads from Sky Daz from Darren Porter. Hello Sky to you. Um, Sky Daz? Sky Daz. Sky Daz. Probably something to do with the skydiving. No, no, no. No, he's not. No. Chris, you know Sky Daz? He'll fill us in afterwards. <laughs> uh, ask Blade what he thinks about the networking uh, Accessi Blues are doing with other clubs and agencies from Steve. 
Yeah, we work really close. I mean, I, I know Steve as well, and we've inv invited Assessi Blues down to Villa Park. Nice lad, Stephen. Yeah, right, yeah, to discuss uh, disabled um, facilities right. for fans at the Villa Blues game. Um, we, we're now uh, taking part in a regional disabled supporters association, mm -hmm. and, and for me, it's close to my heart. I've got a disabled son, mm -hmm. and who was never able to access the match day experience, yeah. and there was nothing there for There's him. So much more now, isn't there? There yeah. is, there yeah. is, there really is. And it's all down to these, it's all down to these kind of people and these kind of groups. And again, social media is a massive part yeah. there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, Sam Marsh, no, Steve, well, no, I'm going to get that one. Benji Smith, 2 2. Bill Sweeney, 2 0 to the Blues. Um, Police Van Percy, you get that one? Very yeah, good. Okay. <laughs> That's from Robert Doyle. Well done, Robert. Uh, love the firearms officers on the Cov Road. All police should be armed from Gaz. Mm, that's an interesting question. Brett Stanley says, is it okay if I tell Gary Rowett to foxtrot Oscar? <laughs> <laughs> I think he was that told is, that on Saturday. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, absolutely yeah. superb. Yeah. Richard Haylett, all the way from Florida, 2 0 Blues. Lindsay Phillips, 3 0. Having a pork pie, you might get up to 4. Uh, Andrew Whitehouse, 3 1 Blues. Uh, we've turned a corner. Lee Camp, Patrick from Buzz Rock. Um, West Midlands Police, have you ever blamed Lee Camp for doing anything? That was a comment that I saw earlier. <laughs> Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. <laughs> this time. 4 0 to Blues. Will, not, go on. Uh, Daniel Dean Jones, um, will West Midlands Police suggest to BCFC? Not to have clappers versus the Villa again <laughs> this season. I'm not answering that one. <laughs> uh, Robert Doyle, the road right. closure is a great idea. Jess McDonough, why do West Midlands police stop using horses? No, that's a good one. We got rid of horses all over 20 yeah. years ago yeah. now. Yeah. Some, I used to love seeing them on yeah. the Cove Road. Um, some force, there's very few forces who have actually <clears throat> still got horses now, to be perfectly honest. Um, I'll be honest, I don't know why West Midlands police got rid of them. They will never come back to West Midlands police, one, rest assured. Last... Um, I was that uh, there was the Newcastle. They were at Newcastle where the, yeah, the guy they punched, yeah. punched the horse, didn't yeah. they? Yeah. There are very few horses with, with police horses. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Andy Smith spying cop. Yeah. Oh, very very good. Good. Really uh, Benji Smith, Karen, police car, knee. <laughs> Not that one, quite that. Though. Jason Truncheon from B Taylor. <laughs> They're mad this lot, honestly. Love it, love it. We go through this for some unknown reason every for every uh, every Monday night. Uh, took my boys to the Villa game at Sands. Credit where credit is due. The police were friendly, engaging, and very polite and professional. My boys loved it, and that made them very very safe. Well done, guys from Wayne Merricks. So you see, you don't get all the bad press all the time. There are people out there who do appreciate and what you do. And do you know what? Right, you. It, it's been eye opening <coughs> for me as well because you know, I, however long I've been going to football, stupid amount of time is. Your oh, automatic assumption is, you know, we control everything. You're, you're, yes. you're the nasty, bu you're the nasty yeah. buggers who make us two thousand away at Villa, and you do this and you do that. That's you the do perception that. that's not yeah. only been given. That's a perception that's grown through social yeah, media. Yeah, 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 yeah. And you guys yeah. could probably do an awful lot more now to dispel all of those, yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, all of those yeah. wrong yeah. theories. Yeah. I think um, it's always been a, a bit us and them. It's yeah. always felt like that, hasn't it? Yeah. The one mm. thing, the one we thing I would the say, uh, talk show. Uniform. That's it. <laughs> yeah. 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 The, um, <coughs> and I still think it's prevalent, you know, it, it's in circumstances as well. Um, I saw somebody mention uh, South Yorkshire police. Um, I think, I think away football supporters as well still are treated by some. Police forces. Mm -hmm. My experiences of going to Sheffield um, and Leeds. Was brilliant. You, yeah, but I, I can only speak yeah, from, yeah, from yeah, my yeah. perspective of going to away games. Sheffield, both Sheffield grounds, Leeds. Uh, it's not. It's not a, a nice environment for away supporters to go. Um, do you think that there's there's still work to be done for police forces? Of course, there is. There's loads of work to be done, but that's our role. We're there to try and convince them to treat people as individuals, yeah. not as a group. Yeah. We're there to point out the ones that are going to cause them trouble. Uh, we're just a small minority, and the rest, <laughs> why, why interfere with their day? Yeah. They ain't going to cause you a problem. You might want to concentrate on this little group, and that's what we do, yeah, yeah. and that's why it's important that we go to every away game. Yeah, marvellous. Steve Portman, yeah. 6 1 to the Blues, 8,500 went to Bruges, and there was a handful of arrests for drunkenness. Uh, 
can't Sounds speak. like trouble to me. Can't cask you in much. Uh, yeah, okay, that one. No, 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 no sorry, not mate, not sorry mate, you're not having that no. one. <laughs> Um, Bobby Hatton, there we go, that's a good one. Ian Roger, bravo, son. Can he burn? Sorry. Ian Rogerson. Gareth Bale. Ricky Otto, oh, I don't know that Gareth one's Gareth on Bale. Gareth on Bale. <laughs> on Bale. <laughs> on Bale. <laughs> uh, how good is a police drone and does it help with policing? Robert Doyle. The drone Charles. is excellent. Excellent. Brilliant. Yeah. Somebody yeah. mentioned about uh, yeah. they were so at the versatile. <laughs> Jermaine, last year Jermaine the time. tank pennant. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> I think with the drone, in years ago, I would have placed a helicopter. Yeah. That would be up above you, uh, and it's there, uh, which costs thousands and thousands and thousands of pounds. Yeah. And just, people just automatically think that when it's up there, something's going on. Yeah. Whereas a drone is less intrusive, isn't it? It's yeah. up, and it's just keeping a watch. I mean, I'm even, I'm even, right, I've even. I, I park in the same place every every yeah. week, right? Drove down there this one day. There's a burnt out van. There was this and there was that, and the police helicopter up and the sirens going everywhere. And I got me and, 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 so, right. Welcome to Birmingham. Yeah. Boom, 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 and boom. Yeah. Right. And that was the perception that you yeah. got immediately. Yeah. yeah. And I, it's probably quite, it's yeah. probably quite wrong. Yeah. And yeah. I think that burnt out van yeah. was there for a reason. Yeah. Somebody had obviously yeah. done it. But the uh, drone Jeff, police force <laughs> field. Uh, Mikhail Force L. <laughs> Some clever guys out there. So quite intelligent. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But the the cost the cost difference between the drone oh. and the helicopter huge. Yeah. Huge. Yeah. huge. Yeah. I, I couldn't give you the exact amount, but it is you know a drone costs thousands to buy. Yeah. Mm. And I'm I'm talking under sort of. That's about five thousand. Yeah. The, yeah. yeah. So. That probably costs the helicopter probably one minute is five thousand right. pounds if you know what I mean. Yeah. Really yeah. Is. Paul, Paul Hipkiss yeah. nicked Spall. Oh, no, that's, I, th- I thought we were doing things to do with football <laughs> and police. Nicked. Yeah. Nick Spall. Nicked. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but you, I, I, you can't put you in category of footballers. <laughs> and I've scored a goal in front of the Tilt and I'll have you know. <laughs> to do with police. Not that I've ever not mentioned that before. No. <laughs> Oh dear, dear, dear. Well, we're almost out of time. It's a minute two. Uh, KMBP shed open from 4.30 to 5.30 tomorrow. Keep right on. That's from Craig Coates. Well done. The horses they got rid of ended up in... Don't end on that, no. Please. Oh, come on, give us another comment. Goodness sake. Lee clamped. <laughs> I like that one. I like that one. That's good. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, there's about 100 comments to go to. Um, oh, I can't say that one, Kyle Colclough, but it is quite funny. Um, <laughs> I definitely can't say the one from Dennis. Uh, Gareth Bale, that was quite a good one, yeah. Uh, Kenny Burnside. Mm. <laughs> uh, I've got 103 comments to go through in a minute. I can't no, do them all. I can't no. do them all. i tell you what, though, we could have gone on forever. For- no issue at all, and as I say, any, if any fans groups out there want us to attend their forum, their meeting, listen week, to this, people. We're more than happy to attend. Food goes down well, but <laughs> you know, more than happy to attend any fans forums you've got, whether yeah. that be at a club, whether that be at a pub, or you know, your own social club. That goes yeah. for me and Blade. No yeah. issues. Whatsoever. Brett Stanley, great show, lads. Very informative. Thanks. Keep right on, Graham Haynes. Lots of. Where, where, where can we find you on Twitter? Give you a Twitter handle so people can get. Go on, give yours. Yours is more important than mine. <laughs> <laughs> we are at WMP BCFC and WMP Villa FC. Okay, there you there have you it. Go. And uh, obviously, you combine forces for the two. You don't, you don't pick one out against the other. You're a Wolves fan. You're a Blue Nose. Um, you know, what more could we have wanted in here tonight? Really, <laughs> apart from Gary Monk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Slide down the table concerning you after Saturday's defeat. Uh, Adam Weeks, Adam Monk, just before we go, a few, uh, some of the ref decisions at St Andrews have been criminal. Can we have a few more refs, oh, mate, please? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the penalty spotters. That's quite a lot. I'm that one. That one. Go. Go. We have a winner then, Brett Stanley, with penalty spotters. Well done, Brett Stanley. You've got the comment of the night. Don't forget, there will be, um, after the game tomorrow, a three word review. And there will also be. I'll be putting my uh, Facebook Live a fast pay up as well. Oh, yes, of course. It's yeah, obviously yeah, the most exciting that thing that's ever happened on the Facebook. There's just, show. there's just hundreds yeah. and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of like buttons being pressed, okay? Yeah. They're, they're just Especially. flying up the screen. You just can't. I can't imagine just how many how many people we've had on and how many comments we've had on tonight. It's been absolutely incredible. Um, listen, guys, thanks ever so much. It's Reading tomorrow. Behave yourselves as always, and keep right on to the end of the road. Now, three points tomorrow. Could we? Could we just? Could oh we yeah. Just, could we just go above them tomorrow? 
Oh yeah. Oh yes. Oh yeah. <laughs> what a weekend this will be coming up. <laughs> <coughs> I think the first thing I'll do is go over and get my Sheffield ticket. Oh, my season ticket in my pocket. <coughs> Colin and Blake, thanks ever so much for coming no, in. Thank um, you. Thank really you for having guys. Yeah, brilliant. It really has been an eye opener as well to, to get, get some kind of understanding. And like I said, you, you're quite happy to come in after the uh, Blues for give us a review on that. And I'm sure these people out there will give us a review on, on their experience as well on the day. You can you know do whatever you want with all that information to make uh, everybody else's uh, experience so much better. Um, and it's not all down to policing. Don't get me wrong. Um, the, the club. Uh, you know, uh, could, could make improvements and you know some of the support, some of the support is good damn well yeah. make some as well yeah. behave bloody behave the lot of you I'm telling you good night keep that on thank yeah. you Mrs Brown yeah. thank you Mr Fun thank and thank you, you Colin and Blade yeah. this Pleasure. has been the Tilton Talk Show thank Monday you. nights it's what it's all for we'll see you back here next week Second. Uh